Welcome big dogs. Today we're going to look at stresses on a solid circular shaft and so this is similar or nearly identical to when we evaluated these stresses on a solid square shaft. So we're going to consider basically three moments and three forces acting on the cross section of a solid circular shaft. This comes into play when the stiffness is defined in all six degrees of freedom and we're going to combine the loads, uh, the axial loads, shear loads, bending loads, torsional loads, and determine a max principal stress using more circle. And then we're going to perform an example calculation. And then I'm going to show you how to integrate it into our object-oriented program that we've already created in Python. It should be pretty seamless since we got the legwork out of the way with the solid square shaft case. So the first thing you want to do is you want to identify the worst case stress locations. In this case, our worst case stress locations are going to be on the outside of the shaft at elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then at the center there at element 5 where we will see our worst case shear stresses acting. The next thing you want to do is you want to draw out or identify your stress distributions. In this case, we're looking at our shear loads, which consist of our force load in the x direction, force load in the y direction, and our moment in the z direction. So if we look at our moment in the z direction, which is producing torque around the shaft, we can identify the stress flow as shown here. Our worst case stresses occur at elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they act counterclockwise when it's a positive moment in the z direction as indicated by the right hand rule. In the negative direction, it would act in the clockwise direction. So our torsional stresses at 1, 2, 3, and 4 is given by this equation right here, where r is the radius. You can see if we put r equal to 0, we don't have any stress, which is the case at element 5. And J is our polar moment of inertia. For the shear load in the x direction, our worst case shear stress occurs at the middle here at elements 2, 5, and 4, and it's given by the stress value is given by this equation right here. We do not have any stress at 1 and 3, given the distribution shown here. In the y direction, we have the same shear stress distribution except our worst case shear stresses occur at 3, 5, and 1, and it's given by the exact same equation. For the axial loads, we got to look at three components. We got to look at the bending moment in the y direction, bending moment in the x direction, and then the axial load in the z direction. We're using the same analogy we used in the previous video where red indicates compression and green indicates tension. So for the x moment, you can see here applying the right hand rule, you can draw something that looks like this where the stress distribution is given by a, a my over i as shown here. Our worst case stresses occur at element 2 and 4. In the y direction we use the same equation as shown here or the same form and our worst case stresses occur at 3 and 1 with compression loads occurring at 1 and our tensile loads occurring at 3. And then the axial distribution is uniform and it's given by this simple equation, force over area. We've all seen that. So now, once we've kind of laid out our distribution, we can go element by element and write down our equations or tabulate them in a table as shown here. And really this is no different than our solid square shaft. We've just updated the equations. Uh, the shear stress equations and the torsional equations and we've included diameter in place of side length as shown here. So now we're going to go perform an example calculation on element 4 to make sure we, we have everything locked down and correct. So given this, these forces and these moments uh, we're going to determine uh, the stresses at element 4 on this stress element. So the first thing we want to do is calculate our geometric properties such as area, area moment of inertia, and polar moment of inertia. That's given by these equations right here. And we're assuming a 
shaft with a diameter of one inch to make the calculations pretty straightforward. Next we apply the stress equations that we identified for element four and when we do that we're just showing which direction they act at element four uh, whether it's in the positive x direction, the positive z direction, the negative z direction, the negative x, whatever. We go ahead and run these calculations and then we can add them together on a stress element as shown here. This is the stress element 4 where we have a axial load of 2.53 psi and a shear stress load of 52.63 psi. Once we determine that then we can construct more circle. We programmed it and this is our more circle for this loading case right here and then we can compare it to our allowables. So that's it guys. That's how we're going to approach this problem in our programming example in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Adios.